live. Live on Facebook, so I guess we are good to go. So hey everyone, I just want to thank you all for just coming back here again um, and watching these wonderful lives that I've been putting on for the last few weeks. Um, and with me is Libby, and I met Libby in March because Libby actually painted my portrait. And I was so impressed with her compassionate nature and just her ability to bring somebody's story, their personal journey to life in color that I have just waited for this opportunity just to chat with her. So Libby, I'm so thankful that you're here. I'm so happy to be here. This is gonna be fun. So I know that you are a live painter. This is, this is what you do, but there is always a process, this creative journey, this creative process to get there. And I just want to know if you'd be willing to share with our audience just what that all looked like for you. Yes. Um, oh, where to begin? Okay. I am one of those people, and you'll hear this a lot with artists who are like drawing sort of the, um, oh my goodness fundamentals you know pencil sketch paint mm -hmm. that they've been doing it uh, most of their lives and I can't remember a time when I wasn't drawing um and this was heavily influenced by my family my dad uh was an artist still is an artist he's yeah. a graphic designer um but I remember just like going through all his old college assignments and sketchbooks and just thinking like oh I wish I could draw like that um and, and it'd be like funky like 80s stuff like yeah. like bits of planet floating in space and there's like a frog on it I thought it was the coolest thing um you know and he did some muraling around our very small town it's like up north Missouri and um you know he'd like let me color in little like the little sketch of it like I I have a very fundamental memory of like holding a brown colored pencil and like sketching in a little oxen um it was, it was too <laughs> so um I always always had a sketchbook always took it around with me I would dedicate like hours at night to uh, like picking out a picture from a magazine like a girl's magazine and just trying to like draw the models that were in there um you know no matter what they were featuring I would just try to like get a and looking back now they're very very scary but they were oh. fundamental <laughs> <laughs> in um learning how to draw people which was my favorite thing to draw yeah um so uh, I think like during high school, I really, really treated art as a hobby. I did not think I would go into it professionally. Um, at, at that point, I wanted to, uh, there was like a time I wanted to be an architect. I wanted to be a director. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like very tangential things to art still, but I was like, that's, it's not art. Like I, I'm not going to be an artist because everybody, um, you know, as a quiet kid in school, um, until I wasn't and that you know people would be like oh Libby she's like so good at drawing and it was my defining characteristic and there was a part of me who was like no 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 mm. I do more than that um, but I learned to like love that and love that part of me um, so by the time I got to end of high school I decided okay maybe um, maybe I'll go into animation and it was, I was um, looking at all the schools I could go to. I applied to, I think, four different um, universities and only one state school. So most of them were like art universities. Um, there's there's like the big name Disney one, um, yeah. Cal Arts. Mm -hmm. that, I did not get into that. That's a master's program. I had no business applying to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I applied to um one in Minnesota one in Chicago and the Missouri State University right. and it was it was down to Chicago and Missouri State and like I am somebody who was like raised in the Christian faith it was like you know mm -hmm. spiritual like listening to God was like a very big part of my life um and I would say still is um and we kind of did this 
experiment almost where there's a passage i know this is like a little bit different than like your other interviews (laughs) um there's a passage where and i never i never remember the name but um a father sends his servant into the town and is like hey the gal who's gonna come up here and water your camels like that's gonna be the guy that you like need to bring on back for my son to marry um and it was like this we are gonna like let god choose in these like predetermined conditions um like this is how i know what will be the right answer because we've like set it up beforehand um and i was going to um either like missouri state which great school um but like wasn't like art school or it was like super expensive like art school um which like would have been a problem but we'd like deal with it later um and i had like missed the deadline for honors college from missouri state and it was like okay if we call and they say like yeah you can still be in the honors college and you can like still live on the honors college floor i'll go to missouri state um if not i will go to school of the art institute of chicago um and they let me in it was like way past the date and they were like yeah we have one more space left on this floor it's yours um and i end up going to missouri state and i looking back on that in hindsight it was the correct decision like i met so many people who are fundamental um in my journey now that i i don't know like what my life would look like if i hadn't gone there um because i did i did go into their animation program Mm -hmm. Uh, about halfway through i decided i didn't actually want to be an animator but i was like gonna stick it through and just do something like peripheral to animation um I didn't know what that was yet though but like all the while like these people that I was meeting just boggled my mind I like so many of my friends I was like how do I know you like you are the coolest most influential like person um like so many fantastic women who just like shaped me and like grew me as a person um and I took a painting class uh, junior year and senior year. And oh my gosh, like I had always painted for fun. Also, I am just rambling right now. <laughs> no, I asked um, for this. Okay. <laughs> but I asked for <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, wow. I'm not going to let. Um, so I was doing these painting classes and the first year it was kind of more like fundamental stuff I I skipped painting one like I asked very nicely and they let me um so like right into painting two we get to use all the colors and do like model portraits but it was in painting three um met one of my favorite teachers Sarah Williams who was like very like yeah go for it like if you've got this idea you've got this vision go for that um so backing up a little bit Uh I um got to go I got a scholarship to go to Florence um like the summer between junior and senior year Florence Italy Florence Italy I know it's like the bougiest thing (laughs) it's um it was like all paid for by this very very generous um it was the Hagen Scholarship Foundation and they were like actually you guys have to study abroad I was like twist my arm like, right, I guess. Right. <laughs> um and I got to go to like all these like churches and museums that had this like original renaissance art beautiful city oh my gosh have you been there I have I spent three days there in Florence oh <sighs> uh, <laughs> I would I'd go back in a heartbeat the only thing I don't know why they don't have ice they need ice <laughs> um let's see but like okay so I'm looking at all these like and all that art from around that time period was very very religious it was like very centered on the bible um and I noticed like we've got these huge panels of like grandeur and um 
I don't know, like majesty, all of this. Like it's it's something that you walk in there and you're like, Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's all roped off though. And it's all like there's something very, very lofty about it. So I got back and I like had this idea on the plane ride back from Florence that um were God active in our lives, that is not what it looks like. Um, you know, like God is in the place that like my grandma does like not want to think about often. Like, I feel like I have seen so much love from like drunk girls in the bathroom that I would say like, that's Christ-like love. Um, um, so like, you know, like we're Jesus walking with us today. I do not think that he would be like chill with everything. Like, I think this is gonna get controversial. Like, I think Jesus would be like pro choice. I think like Jesus would be standing up for Black Lives Matter. Um, like, you know, he would be in there. He would be an activist, and um, like a lot of people that like would be like Christian peers would not agree with that. Um, but like, I just think that like God is very active in the places that like God is needed and not these like we're gonna be in the church and pretend everything's fine and that the world isn't on fire what do you mean yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. yeah, exactly exactly i agree um so like that informed i did this painting series uh, my senior year where i took like my college peers and kind of set them up um so that they were like doing doing these like renaissance poses but um it was like this is the sober driver um like it was all kind of like fraternity party based and all like drunk girls in the bathroom it was like um you know like one girl was like fallen and everybody was rushing to help her um and it was all modeled after different kind of styles of photos from these like uh, religious Renaissance paintings. Um, and so that was, I was like, oh, I forgot that I love painting. Like, this is a really big part of it. Yep. And I was like, but I'll never, I'll never do it. Like, oh, you know, for, for like a job, I'll never paint for a job. This is like just my thing, my set. Little did I know. <laughs> um, so at the end of my senior year, I was very, very fortunate to get an internship with Cartoon Network, which was like out of nowhere. Um, I feel like most of the decisions in my life have been things that I'm like, I gotta do this now. Like it's just a feeling, like a gut kick. Um, And I saw their post one day, I was like, I gotta do this now. And I made the entire application video in one day. It was like, if it's not submitted today, it won't happen. I did it. Um, and I didn't hear anything for months. And then boop, 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 boop. turns out like they've been stalking everybody that like applied the whole time. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> Look, looking at the social media, seeing what everybody's about. Um, and like they they liked me, they liked what I had to say. I did a large part of mine on um dealing with body dysmorphia and like, you know, oh. how like the the women in my life that like I thought were super rad it was just sort of this like altogether feminist like body empowering submission and they liked it and I'm okay with that so for a year I got to basically make like encouraging empowering content for the Powerpuff Girls and it was it was like their pilot program um for their internship yep oh it was like bonkers and it's it's the thing that I like love to drop like oh yeah I've worked I've worked for the Powerpuff Girls and all that right right that's so fun I and I thought I was gonna go right into Cartoon Network I was like this is my in this is animation world um and then the pandemonium hit and that did not happen um a lot about the world changed very rapidly um and me trying to like get into Cartoon Network was like no longer even a thing um because like they they closed their doors they laid off a lot of people that I had even been working with um 
So I was at home for that time in my little itty bitty town, living in my parents' house, um, which was a very, I felt very fortunate to be there because I was sheltered from a great deal of that like initial shock of everything closing down. Um, Cause it's kind of hard to like have the same experience in that small town as it like would hit as hard in the city. Yeah. Um, so I got to just like kind of have, uh, I was working as a graphic designer in that town. I, they had to close their doors though. I got laid off from that. Um, so I just did hmm? lots of shifting, lots of shifting. And it was a time I remember like making little angsty comics even before like actual COVID-19 that I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. <laughs> like I, I wrote this one about like, how do you know, like what the right direction is? Like, I, I feel like I have this ticket for a train that's coming that I like don't even know where this train's going and like when it'll be here. Like, what if I miss it? Um, you know, so I was, it was just like a big time of uncertainty. I had a couple of friends who were in the town with me um, and we all just like had late night deep talks about like, what do we think life holds for us now yes um necessary talks. it was it was and a lot of them my friend had a pool so like we'd just be out there like <laughs> 2 a.m looking at the stars of the country <laughs> yeah. oh one second i do have to cough i'm so sorry okay really how do i move? okay we're good um and I, I did use that time. I, it was kind of silly, actually. I started watching like little cartoons and anime and making fan art for them um, and posting that on TikTok. And boy, I found a community of artists who were like in very similar places, like didn't have a job right now, had an abundance of time on their hands for the first time and mm -hmm. ugh, um, and I joined a discord of these artists. So there's like a large pool of people. And I found like ladies my age who are also drawing like the same shows that I like to draw. And slowly we just kind of moved into talking more and more, FaceTiming. Um, and like suddenly I just had this like group of friends that were like, you know how they're like, don't talk to strangers on the internet. Oh yeah. I was doing that every day. Um, and even though the world, like my walls had gotten smaller, like the world got bigger and bigger and like, I've got a BFF in Canada now and Philly and Virginia. Wow. Um, and so like, that was a really, really big blessing of that year. Um, and it was one of those friends who first sent me the live painting um, video, the first one I ever saw. And she said, you could do this. And I thought about it. Mm -hmm. I like watched it. I was like, I could do that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And yeah. I thought about it some more. And it was like one of those, like, I got to do this now. Like, yeah. I got to start. I said, I got to start now. Um, and I did. I did like a couple of like practice paintings. I had a friend who was getting married like in a few months, I messaged her. She was familiar with my work. And I was like, how would you feel if I just <laughs> like, if I gave this to yeah. you as a gift? And she was like, uh, of course, super, mm -hmm. super thrilled about it. Um, so even looking back at that painting, I've learned so much since then and like have technically improved and just like, you know, the bride and groom were like too small on it. Like I, I painted exactly what I was seeing and that was like the back of a lot of people's heads. Um, like going back, I'm like, wow, we've made it a long way. Mm -hmm. um, but like, so in the meantime, I like moved to Kansas City. I got a different job at, um, a physical therapy company which was random oh my yeah, god I know like it's the weirdest journey um they needed a social media person but very rapidly they were like actually we need somebody to go to doctor's offices uh <laughs> and like give them bags of Cheetos <laughs> it was a weird time yeah um I, I, <laughs> I actually met my partner there so it was like another 
good timing. He's a physical therapist and mm-hmm. both of us no longer work there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but like in all the while the live painting was just growing and growing and I did two, um, I think like for free and I posted them. I had a third one lined up and it was like mysteriously canceled. I wish I knew so much more about that, but I, (laughs) (laughs) um, but I like posted a few on TikTok and that got me a few more bookings and then like a few more um, until I did, I think it was one and it, they, they reached out the week that the wedding was and they were like, hey, everybody else is booked. You want to come paint this? And I was like, for sure. I don't have anything going on. Um, and this was like Tuesday and I'm painting that Friday. Um, and it was the first one. It got like 10,000 likes on TikTok. And then one of my friends was at the first wedding I did and they had me do a different surprise wedding um, for one of their mutual friends that was getting married. And it was that one. Um, it was trying to think I think it was down in Harrisonville Missouri and I showed up I hid um I got the painting done of the bride and groom and then when I posted that one to TikTok it got millions of views and it was bonkers um especially because I was transitioning over my TikTok from like all this kind of fan art fun stuff Mm -hmm. to the wedding painting like all my views had died off um like nobody wanted to see the wedding painting there's like where's Naruto I'm like he's not (laughs) I don't have time for Naruto anymore I'm so sorry um but like this was the first one that it was very very validating people were like oh my gosh this is like the best one that I've seen. Um, like, and, and it was like, I was doing this for three months total, like at all. Um, right. And I, I got booked out in like different places. I, um, I don't know, like this year, cause like this is now I'm getting to the weddings that were like booked last year. Yep. Uh, had one in Virginia. I just went to uh, North Carolina um which is where I got all this um (laughs) um, like I have one in Colorado Georgia like so many you're all over I look at your Instagram and different things I'm following I'm like and here I am in uh Virginia and 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 I'm I'm waiting for these type of posts and now I am in Japan and now (laughs) I'm like I'm just waiting because I, I am too. <laughs> it seems like it's really it's really blown up for you. So what caused you to want to make it a business? Was this, I mean, because it was blowing up and you were like, mm-hmm. I could really make money at this. I um yes, because I I didn't know like professionally at that point like what I wanted to do um I do have also a day job once again now but it's work from home and I love it so much like I'm gonna keep doing it so I'm just like a chronic worker bee but this one is like social media content but I would love like the dream the dream right now is like do live painting full-time um like live on some sort of farm thing like basically have a house that's a goal um have chickens yes I would love some chickens um and just paint and also be able to paint in my free time yeah um this is like a long way off but you never know um, you never know I think it's a long way off (sighs) <sighs> maybe maybe, maybe six no. months from now you'll be like you know Ellen remember when I said it was a long way off <laughs> it's like right around the corner <laughs> oh that'd be nice that'd be nice so it's I, been so can I ask you a question um because I believe as a musician my like I'm a musician and I find it very therapeutic and I find it as a way for me to connect with the universe at large and um and it there's always like a restorative factor and a healing factor that can come through art Mm -hmm. and come through creativity. So I was wondering if you could just speak to that a little bit, because I remember when I did art in university, I had two classes. I had one where everything had to be perfect and it didn't go well for me at all. Mm 
-hmm. Then there was the other instructor where they were just like, do whatever, just be free with it. You know, just like have fun with it. And I actually enjoyed it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I enjoyed it. And my confidence grew. Mm -hmm. And then I've worked with a lot of art therapists and different things like that over my time. And it just feels like it is something that can bring healing to our planet, especially in a time like this. I agree. Um, I, goodness, I don't even know where to start on that. I think what like art means to me in making it and like where I do find that therapeutic quality. Um, I do so much portraiture that like, you know, it's very seldom that I'm like, this is something that is just coming from my mind. It's mm -hmm. always something that's already existed, something that's I'm mashing up or like just giving, I think like honor to like, that's, that's what a lot of my portraits are is like memorializing something um whether that's a moment or a person um like the way a night felt like i'm finally starting to think about like what i want to paint next for me um and something that was like really calling my name was some old photos i'm like yeah. talking five four six years old uh, just like my friend group in a parking lot, like really, really late at night, all talking on a summer night. And it's like kind of blurry. It's really low light. Um, but like, I, I do want to give that moment some honor because like some of those friends are no longer here. Um, and just like note that moment, note how good it was and give it like a place to hang and like kind of be immortalized that's what i felt you did with the one <laughs> that you did of me um i felt like <laughs> yeah that you like i mean that you took the you took the story and you put it into a space and place that i mean it just touched me i mean the way that that was done the way that it was brought forth um was powerful really powerful and I'm sure so that much. a lot of people say that to you. Like I've seen some of the responses after you turn the, the painting around or the bride and groom seat. It must, it must bring you a lot of joy to know that you are highlighting a moment of moment. It really does. I, I have to like be smart about that sometimes because like during a live painting, I've got so much like adrenaline and stress that I like need I really, really like that I record it because I can go back and like watch it and like go, you know, like after all the chemicals have like left my body and I can appreciate like what I've done. Right. <laughs> that like, it does mean a lot to people. And so many people have very, very nice things to say that like, if I think about it too much, it just, like I'm just a girl from Missouri and it boggles my mind that I get this opportunity to give people a moment of their one of their favorite nights of their life you know we hope um like we don't know what better nights will come or worse nights but like that is something that's so important to them and I got to like drink it in with my eyes and put it on the canvas yep I don't know. It's, it's bonkers. Could you see yourself? I know we talked about this in, when I was in Missouri, that I could see you going and traveling around the world and doing portrait shots or shots of people and villages and, you know, not shots, but painting, you know, um, mm -hmm. would that be something you would consider doing? Like capturing I something in a different way? Like when you, when you mentioned farm, wait, let me do something here. When you mentioned farm, I was thinking of when I spent time in the Himalayas and there were the terraces that were going up and they were all farming on these terraces, but the big mount, I mean, like, you know, the mountains were behind them and it was absolutely gorgeous. And so when you were saying that, I was like, I could see her doing it. I would be honored to, I, I am never somebody who's going to like turn down something that would come along you know if like my life angled in such a way that it's like it's time for me to travel um I think I see like a need for me here 
I would totally do it. Um, I am not great at travel, TVH, like short term, like flight to flight to flight. But I, I remember like when I did go to Florence and I just sort of like lived there for four weeks. That was amazing. Like just getting to walk around and be in that place. Um, I think it's such a different experience than like, we're here, we got to see the sights, we got to roll, we got to go. Right, right. Um, so yeah. that is that is something I'd love to do. I remember looking at like impressionist painters in art history, and they would just go set up shop. Um, I think Monet would just sit at the same train station and he would paint it over and over again um, and paint it at different times of day paint it different times of the year, paint it like with this people, these people and that people. Um, yeah. And just like work on capturing that light and that moment and the frames. Um, I think that would be awesome. Wow. Libby, I like you. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> I like you. Um, so I know we're gonna wrap this up uh, cause I said I would keep it about like 30 minutes for you. Um, is there anything that you'd like to share with people, just young people who are considering doing art because there are so many, I mean, some of these gen Zs, I'm telling mm -hmm. you, they, they may hate school, but I watch what they are doodling, which they call doodling. And I'm like, that is mm -hmm. not doodling. Okay. If that, and they're like, oh yeah, this is just a little doodle. And I'm like, that is not a little doodle. <laughs> They're so powerful. I, um, yes. if I was able to draw like that when I was that young, it'd be over. It'd be over for everybody. Um, I think like, okay, number one, that the internet is very powerful in offering resources. Cause I like, I see them, they're learning so fast. And it's like, I did not have, you know, the step-by-step -step tutorial access that like a lot of kids do but it's a double-edged sword in that my biggest advice for like up and coming artists would be is like, keep your own sketchbook. Um, like don't feel the need to post because it's so discouraging sometimes if you work super hard on something and then it like doesn't garner any attention. Um, and that like kind of takes away from the fact that like you created this, you work super hard on it and it looks amazing. Like the internet's fickle. The algorithm isn't always gonna serve us. It's the weirdest thing. Mm -hmm. I can get like two on a reel and then the next day, like this one I just did, I suddenly got like 270. I'm like, how did that happen? Yeah. Like, what? what is that? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> it's so, it's so weird. And it like, it punishes you if you don't oh. post Instagram specifically. Like yep. if you're not posting every day, it's like, fine. Nobody gets to see your next post then. I um, <laughs> so I, and I think that also like, you know, if you're drawing and you are feeling that pressure to just like make yourself do some sort of output, it gets to be like very unhealthy. Like I noticed during the pandemonium that like, I was like, I gotta make something. I gotta post something every day. And I just wasn't liking what I was making anymore. So keep art, at least like a section of it for you. Um, share what you're proud of, but like note that the internet is not always like gonna love something as good as it deserves to be loved. And sometimes it, it, sometimes it will, sometimes it'll surprise you, but mm -hmm. I don't know, do, do it for you. Do it for you. That's, and I think that's like the greatest advice you can give is do it for you because that's where it comes from right it comes from your mm -hmm. heart first and and that's what i was saying at the beginning that you're like i felt with the piece that you did of me that there was total compassion and that you got into the story you got in it and it came from here and then you just produced it out there and when i and i can feel that i can feel when somebody just puts something together and it's like really shoddy and you're just like okay pal <laughs> sure what that is but okay um but then where's that energy from here which i felt on that piece and then i see in some of the things that you're doing for these weddings there's your winning piece right there 
because it's all about connection. You connected not only with the art, but you connected with me as the one you were doing the portrait of. But then I see it in your, your things that people are connecting with you. They're not just connecting with the art, they're connecting with you, which I think is the big piece right there at the end of the day. So I like you, Libby. I'm so tickled. Thank you so much, Ellen. Um, I like you. I like you and I am so happy that you had me on here. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for just sharing your story and a little bit of your journey. That means a lot. Of course. Anytime. Now you go and take care of yourself. Yeah, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> you have no place you're flying to, right? So you can just veg yeah, it out. I will not be going out now. <laughs> it, all, it all ends. All right. Um, hey, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Do I just, do I just like hang you up? You just hit end and I'm hitting.